Hi everybody, my name is Doug Wilson and this is Yellow Hawk Customs Outdoors. We're looking at the Grizz channel right now, right? The Grizz, see? Grizz, get it? Actually, it's Grizzly Bear, right? Matrohota. Matrohota. Matrohota, right? Okay, so Bob um, is a multifaceted outdoorsman, right? He gets into a lot of different uh craft uh what craft what things things okay <laughs> so he's got it in his head that he wants to build an anorak right he wants to make an anorak at the rendezvous he, at the rendezvous we're gonna teach it in what, what is it november? november 3rd through the 11th 2018 uh the Dispar paragon dispersed camping area uh daniel boone national forest kentucky kentucky okay right. kentucky Kentucky. And what we're going to have an anorak class, and I just want to just talk about some stitching uh, or right. stitches to, to sew this up and have a general overview. That's there all. There you go. Okay, so anoraks, I love them. I endorse them. Uh, who's the guy that makes the real nice ones? Toby, uh, Toby Holland. Toby Holland at Wandering Parson. Right, right? Good, good guy. Great anoraks. Ex right? Excellent. So we're going to try to make our own at the rendezvous. Right. You guys stay tuned, and we'll get right to it. <laughs> All right, fellas and gals. <clears throat> As I said uh, in our uh, on our blog, or not blog, but our Facebook page, Woods Runner, and or the National uh, Rendezvous 2018 Facebook page, the Woods Runner, where we're going to uh, attempt to do our own primitive anorak. Um, any uh, outdoorsman worth his salt, mountain man, uh, Native American frontiersman, long hunter, whatever, knew how to sew. Yeah, you gotta know how to sew, man. And they knew how to repair their gear and to make gear. Now, uh, you'll find that most of the uh, older uh, materials were leather, leather and fur, okay? And uh, when the uh, white settlers started training with the Native American wool blankets, uh, that type kind of sort of went out the window because they found it was, they didn't have to hunt the wool blanket. Opportunistic. Yeah, they, they just, they took advantage of it. They didn't have to hunt the wool blanket <laughs> and uh, and they could sew it easier. They didn't have to hunt the wool right, animal. Right, and they could, they could pattern it out and so forth. Uh, <clears throat> so with this whole bushcraft uh, uh, thing going on genre, um, Doug and I used to do leather work in the Native American powwowing and whatever, okay? And he still does. I used to sew my own breech cloths, my own leggings, and, and things of that nature. Um, so, going on the primitive end of things, or the bush crafty things, you know, bring these types of crafts back. I'm going to teach you some uh, suturing that we'll be using at the uh, rendezvous, so you can maybe sit down and you know, kind of practice a little bit at home. Um, what I'm going to be using is this. Uh, one of these moving blankets. It's cheap. Uh, I got it for free. These are just teaching aids. Yeah. This the problem with this is it's compressed uh, from different salvaged materials, so it's hard to get the needle through. So that's why I'm using a, an assistant here for my hands because they'll get tired. All right. But when you have a wool blanket, either 80% wool, 70% wool, it's good to have a wool blend because it'll last longer. Uh, also, it won't shrink as much. Uh, some of you, if you want to, to take your blankets, which should be at least queen size or bigger, so you can have some scraps left to over. To make an anorak? With the, the, queen size? Yeah, you, queen size or so. That's yeah, that what, gives you... That's what we're talking about, anorak. That gives you screw up. Yeah, yeah, theory. yeah, and plus you can make your hood, you can make your, your sleeves, you know. Um, you can get them on, on eBay, that's where I, I purchased mine. The Swiss Army blanket weighs about three to five pounds. Good heavy blanket costs about I don't know seventeen to twenty some odd dollars. What about the military wool blankets? You can use you can use OD green. Depends on what color you want. I'm kind of tired of OD green. I love and, and gray. I mean I like it, but anyway, um, you want to get yourself a, a, a nice nice heavy duty blanket, something cheap. Doesn't Does it have to be wool? Yeah. Although I mean, wool is preferable. It's better for for, for for open fires and campfires. Wool right. is the fleece. Okay. Um, the second thing is is that um, it's cheap. All right. And uh, it gives you that, you know, that primitive bushcraft type look. Also, it gives you that that warm bushcrafty feeling. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, a wool blanket of your of your design. All right, and you're going to need some some thread. All right. What I have here is yarn, and I think this is um, 
you see here. This is uh, let's see, it's not just one hundred percent acrylic, and it's six point point five millimeters. It's usually it's used for cheap for crocheting. Uh, you can use um, the the lining of a paracord, you know, to sew, but it's so small it might rip through the wool. Yeah, I'd be afraid as, as you're pulling through. Um, so, or you could use paracord itself if you get it on a needle. Uh, or you can use twine, jute. Uh, you yeah, can, this is just one way of doing yeah, this. You can That's use it. waxed uh, cotton, uh, sinew, or whatever. But I like to get a little thicker um, uh, suturing material so that uh, you 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 get the ends together. They don't they don't you you can you can take up more material by using a bigger suture or a bigger right. sewing. Okay. Um, the other thing is is that. <clears throat> This material here will add additional warmth to your seams because it is made out of a polyester. It is made out of something that will hold heat. You can get okay. wool yarn too. Yeah, if you want. You know, so that's up to you. Uh, <clears throat> the other thing is you're going to need is you're going to need some sort of a household needles or upholstering needles of some sort. Preschool needles. Okay. <laughs> this these are blunts. Now, if we had a woven um, blanket, these should work. Okay, and they have a big eye. All right, uh, because this uh, this is thicker material, I use the sharp one, okay, and it has a decent eye on it also. You still have to use the. Uh, you, you do, but you, yeah. you, you don't have to. Now, you might say to me, "Why hand sew this?" Ooh. Well, Ooh. the the first thing is it teaches patience, okay, <laughs> a Ooh. lot of patience. It uh, it brings about hand to eye coordination. As far as spacing is concerned because everything you do here you eyeball you're probably not going to want to carry a 50 pound sewing machine out there too right you know what i mean this is a running locking stitch and um when you know you'll learn a new stitch okay uh, rather than just a flat straight stitch or a uh running stitch whip stitch okay yeah. whip or, or loop stitch, all whatever. different kind of stitching and what you're going to do is you're going to sew this anorak inside out all of your stitching is going to be on the inside so that your seams look good when you turn it right side ah. out. Okay? The other thing you, you can think about for an anorak is it's essentially, well, you're going to need a good pair of scissors. I'm going to go up and get an anorak. So they big, know. big scissors are nice. I mean, these um, big EMT, scissors. EMT scissors are cheap. They cut real well. This is a good scissor, okay? You might want to get yourself a, a small needle nose or, or flat nose type flyer or whatever, or whatever's on your, uh, your Leatherman or your Gerber. Um, so it'll help you push the needle through and pull it out. The, um, if you look at an anorak, it's, it's basically a poncho with sleeves and you sew down the sides. That's basically what it is. Uh, it's usually boxy or squared, okay? Has a hood, has a, a vented neck, and it might have vented sides along the side of the, uh, um, the uh, coat itself or jacket itself so you can get it easy on easy off all right so um, a lot of, I looked at a number of videos and they talk about uh, taking apart a uh, <clears throat> a, uh, um, a sweatshirt a hooded a hoodie oh. and using that as a, That's a good idea. as a, as a uh, pattern or you can just get a pattern at your Joann's or Michael's or whatever which they do get military discounts they must you know I, I was having a great time with the girls and um, you can get a pattern of an anorak, but the problem with it is it's too short um, in length. You want an anorak needs to go, and Doug's showing you one. Uh, this is, this, this is, is my wool one from uh, Toby, Toby Holland, Holland, Wandering Parcel. You want your anorak to be long past your knees, because in a, in a last ditch effort to stay warm, this will help you. This is your sleeping okay, bag. Okay, it's your sleeping bag, right? Also, you, you, you may want a hood. I don't like hoods, but you may want a hood. You also want it to have a lot of gusseting in the in the, uh, in the armpits, okay, so that you can get it on and off easier, and so that it'll create air pockets within um, your clothing that you wear under it. Like you might wear. Um, and you, you're gonna put this a one's acrylic it. fleece. Yeah, that's fleece. And by far, it is warmer than the wool one that he made for me. So this is the one I like. Is that a burn hole? It is. Yeah. Fleece fleece melts around fleece open will fires. Melt. It okay. will melt. It'll get little burn holes in it. Right. Here. Uh, 
and that's the only drawback. Yeah. Fleece is careful. good if you're a backpacker using a backpack and stove. Wool but, usually shrugs it off. It, or it'll it'll burn it a little bit, right. but it won't melt. It won't go through yeah. usually. But um, <laughs> if you're going to do open fire camping and, and, and that sort of thing, wool is the thing you need to have. Yeah. Okay? So um, when we go to this, this rendezvous, I'm going to use, everybody's different. If you ever saw, um, uh, see a man, not a man called a horse, but um, um, Jeremiah Johnson. <laughs> His, his squaw <laughs> puts it up against the shoulders, yeah, right. the buffalo hide, and she's like fixing it, eyeballing it, eyeball it to make him a coat, right? Another good thing you might want to have, and I didn't bring it with me, is a... Um, you want a coffee, Bob? No, thank you. I'll have water, though. Is, okay. a, is a flexible tape. Not, not one made out of metal that draws out, but it's a, it's a cloth tape, it, a yard tape, or at least a yard long. It's, it's easier for measuring you. You know, around your neck, around your arms, around your chest, and so forth. Here, I just have to have one in my go bag. That's cool. Very cool. <laughs> so here is one. I'm not going to take it apart, but they're made out of paper, or or they'll be made out of cloth. I bought one made out of cloth. Now, when I when I come to this rendezvous, I'm going to be bringing extra needles. Uh, I'll have some extra uh, yarn. Um, I'm not going to have any extra blankets. <laughs> But um, you, you might want to have two blankets of different colors. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking about doing that because so, I'm going to take a smaller blanket of a different color and make my sleeves out of it or make my hood out of it, okay? So um, you can be creative. I mean, we can go along the edge and we can do, you can do an X stitch and so forth. There's all kinds of things you can do. You can add beads to it. <clears throat> you can add ribbon to it. A lot of Native peoples put ribbon on it. Um, so, it was a mainstay of the frontiersmen. Thanks, Doug. I mean, there was the capote, not Truman Capote, but the capote was a wraparound. So, if you have a, a, um, a uh, pattern for a capote, you can use it. You just don't cut it down the center so that it wraps. Right. You just leave it one, one whole piece of, uh, you know, blanket, all right? Uh, this will teach you a lot of patience. It'll let you know how bad your eyes are. Uh, Coconut water? You can add it to it. Yeah, well, I, I flavor the water with it. All right, thanks. It tastes good. I'm, I'm on the trop in the tropics now. <laughs> anyway, um, you can do whatever you want with it, but it's yours, you see. The sleeve should be a little longer. Go down past the knuckles so you can draw your hands into it in case you don't have gloves or you want to lift something up that's hot to keep you warm, okay? And as I said before, it should be long, and it should be pretty square. It, you know, it isn't for, you know, trim fit guys. You, um, so, <laughs> let, not enough of the talking, let's, let's start showing. Uh, before I do that, though, I want to show you a find I got. So, my, my bushcrafting experience was in Boy Scouts of America. Not the Scout, but Boy Scouts of America, okay? I came upon this uh, Scoutmaster's uh, pen knife at an antique shop. And I, I oiled it, cleaned it up, and sharpened it. Really nice little knife. I mean, when I was a boy, yeah, this is one of the things you, you look forward to having, okay? And uh, you had to learn how to use a knife and an axe and a saw in scouting. Yeah, I had you a could, knife like that when you, I was you, eight. You couldn't have one, okay? You, you, could, you couldn't have one, all right? Or you couldn't use it. So this is a, it's, it's a, a memory for Bob, goes down memory lane. Always wanted one. I mean, we had them like this that were made by, I forget, by the, the company, like, um, Colonial made them, whatever, but they didn't have the scout insignia on it. Boker? And, and no, Boker didn't make them. No. Colonial made them, but it uh, it has a scout insignia on it. Who would have made the hook? Though? Okay. Um, I don't know about Boy Scout. Oh, come on. Barlow. Barlow. That, that was a Barlow knife. Yeah, 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 that was a Barlow. All right, just wanted to show you that. And then I'm going to show you something else near the end of the, of the video. All right, so what I did here, okay, here. There's another thing we need to talk about. There's so much I, 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 I'm, I forget and I'm thinking about while I'm talking, okay? You have to decide whether you want to use a single strand um, piece of yarn to sew with or a double strand like I have right here, okay? Um, I prefer the double strand because it's stronger, okay? So that's why I, uh, I doubled it up. You can do a lot of sewing with just a single strand, but and actually you'll do whip stitches and they'll be a lot closer and a little tighter weave. But the weave doesn't have to be tight, mainly because it creates air pockets 
within those dead spaces, okay? Mm -hmm. It's not going to come apart, okay? You're not, you're not going to see your naked body or whatever, but it will be nice and it'll be looser, okay? Not form-fitting, right? Excuse me. So, what I started here was a tie-off, and I'm gonna, we're going to talk about bar tacking a little bit. Uh, a bar tack is put on wherever there's a stressor. So like the beginning, let's say you're going to sew your sleeves, or you're going to sew down the side of, of the anorak. Wherever your beginning is near a stressor, or like say you're, you're moving stress like this, point. a stress, stress point, point, you'll want to double up on your suture there. A couple more whip stitches and tie it across the back, and I'll show you. What I started here was a, uh, this is a, uh, a, a running uh, or locking whip stitch, okay? It's a locking suture. So what you do, is, I don't know whether you're going to be able to see this or not. I should probably come to the other side. Let me see if I can get the camera closer. Because they're not going to be able to see that. Okay. You line your edges up, which is no big deal. I mean, you don't have to have them exactly lined up, all right? And you look for, you know, your spacing, you're eyeballing your spaces. I got this at about, I guess, a half inch apart, okay? So you just take your needle. Now, you don't want to put it, like, right here. Okay, because that's a rip out right there. That, that's that's that's, that's not strong not enough. enough. You need you need more material uh, to gather before you 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 stitch. Okay, so kind of even it up a little bit as best you can. Eyeball the distance from this one to this one. Okay, all right. All right, hold on for a second. They're, they're, they're not to be able to see it. It's got to be within six inches okay. for them to be able to see it. So we're making an adjustment here. All right, I'll just cut that out. All right, so anyway, uh, you're holding, you know, you got about a half an inch, you know, you're going to eyeball it. You're going to come down maybe, what, what, about an eighth of an inch or so, or a quarter of an inch, okay? Mm -hmm. And like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. I usually put my fingers, see, my finger is going to give me my width, see? See my, the, my nail, my fingernail, oh, yeah. you see? I use it that way. You got to remember, you know, the peoples of, of that time didn't have all the not, nice new modern shit that we have, okay? Now, um, I can get this through here, but it's a pain. So we'll take this here, and we'll choke up on it, and we'll push it through. There you go. And then we'll come on the other side, and we're going to pull it through. Okay? All right. Now, before you take it all the way down, which would make it a flat, a flat stitch, we'll okay? Lock it in. Or lock, you take your, got your loop here, okay? You take your needle and go back in, inside of itself, like that, okay? And you pull it towards you and then pull it away from you. And there you have your locking stitch. And the closer you make these to each other, See? the tighter that weave's gonna be. Right, so like I said, it doesn't have to be real tight, like, like whip real, real close to each other. I mean, if, if you're gonna be spending all day Right, there, if you wanna okay? be there all day. And, right. you got, and you're using a finer, say if you're using paracord like this, you know, you could use it, you know. But uh, the, I, I, you're going primitive, they didn't have paracord. Right. They had leather, or they had, maybe their wife had knitting yarn that they did from wool or whatever, okay? Plus, like I said, this will give you another shot at being warmer, when it, and this is a polyester anyway. And if it gets wet, it won't, you know, it'll dry better. So yeah. once again, we go to the next, we go to the next one, see? Take my thumb again, bang, okay? Place my needle where I want it to be, just get it started a little bit. Now you can, there are leather, um, leather things you can get for your finger. You can put these, what they call them, leather, um, or you can get leather, it all. Le leather guards, okay, well, it all will take too damn long. But anyway, you hold it, once again, here, okay, push it through. Now, like I said, a wool blanket will probably work better because it already has, it has a weave, okay? So, you got your loop, come back over top, run it through. Now, I'm left-handed, so it might be a little different. You might be seeing this. I'm gonna pull it tight, close that way, pull it away, and pull it here, and there's your, there's your locking stitch, there okay? You That's a run, those are running locking stitches. And if you notice, your, your thread is on top, not on the side. Right. You can put it on the side if you want. I prefer to put it up top because it gives me a barrier along the seam. See, now we're not putting a, a welt on our, on our seams. And I'll show you what a welt is. If you take, say you're gonna sew this together like this, all right, you're gonna have another piece of material that sits in between it, you see? And that's gonna be cut off here, all right? So you have a you have a line that goes along here that creates a welt 
okay? And that what that does is it protects the, um, the threads and it keeps water from seeping through, okay? So if we were to turn this And what you would have to do is you would have to have strips, thin strips, and they're also harder to sew in. But they usually use this for shoes or for moccasins. A uh, welt. Okay, yeah. you put a welt in and you sew it this way, all right? And what that does, it protects, if you're going in and out, in and out, in and out, like this, this a regular flat stitch, okay? What it does is that the thread is protected inside the welt, okay? Rather than it being naked without the welt. If it's naked without the welt, it's like this. The threads are sitting inside, but if it's in the welt, it's protected. Okay. They Plus, use that normally for knife sheaths, right? Knife sheaths and or moccasins. Anything or that can cut. Now, if you turn this inside out, which I, I don't know whether you can see it, when you turn it inside out, you're going to have it's going to look pretty much it won't it, it'll look something like this, but these these edges will be over top of it like that, and the welts in the middle. Okay. That's 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 time consuming and hard to do, so I, I'm not going to deal with. It. I just thought I'd show it to you. All right end and twist it and usually this will give you good hand eye coordination usually I can put it through here okay but sometimes and it's not wet Try enough waxing it well you can wax it, but here's what you can do you can take a piece of paracord like this you make a loop see it's not on the end it's mm -hmm. a regular loop all right take it put it through here because it will go through there see that ah. okay see that now that's through now put this booger in here like this and pull it through. See? There you have it. Wow. Okay, so now it's threaded. All right, guys? Now, like I said, you can do a single single um, weave, if you like, with a single. I don't think that's strong enough, personally, okay? So what I like to do is double it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double this and put an overhand knot in the back end of it to secure the needle, okay? So I'll leave a little, little bit of uh, a tail. All right. and pull it through. Okay. Now, in some weaves, this knot can be pulled through the the material. All right. So in order to not have that happen, because you could do the whole thing, your whole nine rack that way, and you'll start to find it's loosening up where you your your origin of your 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 sewing began. Right. So what I do is this, is. We'll go back again, you know, like I said, the finger the finger technique, okay? Push it through, right? Bring it all the way through. This will really touch your hands. And then you have a loop here. So it's just like the locking stitch, see? Uh, all right, so you bring it through and you lock it down. That locks it in, that first stitch, right? Right, that's your first stitch, right? Now you can take that and put it on the side like this if you want, see that? If you want, because that keeps that from going like this. Okay, or you can you can take it over the top like the, the regular locking stitches. Okay, I like to do it. Um, you can do it like that. You see, but what it does, it leaves this open. Mm. Okay, so what I like to do is keep that part closed. So I'm going to take it down here, and I'm just going to pull it down. This is actually a lark's head, mm. doing a lark's head knot. Okay, now what you can do is you can come over the top. You see, come over the top, and if you want, you can lock these in along here. See that? And those will, those will sit. And that just gives you extra uh, non-coming apartness <laughs> protection. All right? So what you're doing is you're doing a, a running um, a whip stitch. Okay? So see, this, this material is a little easier than the other one. All right? So I'm coming through, and I want this to be over the top. Like so. And it's important that you take your fingers and position the stitches where you want them. Right. Okay. So that's going to pull a little bit because it's our first stitch. Now I'm going to run back down here again. This is an easier. Um, yeah, it's not as thick. Yeah. Now I'm not locking this. This is just a running stitch. Okay. These stitches we use in surgery. Okay. <laughs> it's called a running stitch. We put. Think of this as two edges of skin together. Okay. And you got to be pretty dexterous with this stuff. See. Right. A lot, of, a lot of fingering here. Yeah, yeah. You're fingering, <laughs> but you're not getting any pleasure. Nor, nor are you giving anybody else any pleasure. Okay, so I'm keeping that in line here. Now, there's a lot of ways you can tack this down. I could uh, tie this to this 
and, and reinforce it, but you know, and, and don't, don't need Usually to. Usually if you run it over that a few times, it locks it now, down. Now see, I'm, I'm coming a little closer now. See, rather than the, the, the half of an inch, I'm coming a little closer with this stitch, okay? Mainly because it is, a, it is a running stitch. So once again, if I want to lock it, I could drop it over the top like so, but I, we're, we already talked about that. This is just a running stitch, see? Okay, see how it starts to whip? See that? And it's a little tighter stitch, okay? It, it uh, Maybe you might want to do this on the sides. You might want to do it, you know, on the arms. You might want to do a locking stitch on, on the sides. It, it's up to you, you know, how big you are, how small you are, how rough you're going to, you know, use it. What are you going to use this for? Uh, mostly these coats are on the outside. So you'd put, like, say, a, a short or long sleeve poly pro on first, you know, your layering, all your layering techniques, okay? And then you might put a fleece or a wool sweater, you know, or something like that. And then you're going to put this wool anorak on top. See how she comes now? And I start, and I'll just continue this all the way down the end of this uh, blank, right. this edge, okay, till I come to an end. And I'll do the same thing. I'll do a, uh, and I'll show you that in a minute. I'm just, I'm not going to sit here and suture the whole thing, but I'll show you how to lock this end down when you're when you're done, okay? All right. All right. All right. That's a running stitch. Okay, remember when I was telling you about, you know, bringing your stitching to an end, okay? Let's say we've come, we've come to an end here, and we talked about bar tacking. Now, <clears throat> one thing you can do is you can cut your knot out so that you have two open ends here, okay? And once you, you go through, this is going to be a harder piece. <laughs> okay, once you come through here, like so, all right? You can take this and spread this open, all right? And you can do an overhand knot here on one of them, see? All right? And then you can come, you can bring it around this way. Well, I'm gonna lock that in. So your overhand knot is, should be a square knot, right, left over right or right over, and right over left or right over left, left over right, okay? So see, I've knotted this down here, okay? So then what I can do is I can take this end and go to the other side that I didn't tie. Mm. So that's right over left. See? Okay. And you're, you know, your, your, your material is going to crunch up a little bit, but that's to be expected because it's, it's cloth. Okay. And you can tighten this as long as you can flatten it out with your hand. And then, um, oh, it would be left over right, but I'm just going to do a granny. I'll do a granny now. I'll double it down this way. Okay. And I'll just go back on it like that. And you can put in as many knots in here as you want. Okay. And you can have a lump though. So. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, so there, so that's, that's how you, you bar tack it off, okay? You can bar with these. Now you can put this on this side, this on that side, all right? And then you can just whip stitch it a couple times, okay? See, I'm on the back end here. See that? I just pull it out a little bit, see that? Okay, and I can go over, I can go the other, excuse me. I can go the other way now, I can go this way. I can go over top. Right. Okay. And if I want, if I like to lock them off on the when I get done, I want to lock them off. Oh, you're finishing up. I'm finishing up. Right I'm now. finishing up the yeah. line, right? I can lock it off. Okay, like so. All right. And then I'll lock it off again, and I'll tie it to these two because I want this to hold. Mm -hmm. Because because if you look at these Chinese and uh, manufactured cheap clothing and all, they come apart. Yeah. You know, they, they, they'll, they'll backstitch. They'll take it. They'll go. They'll take the machine and stitch, and they'll backstitch, backstitch, backstitch. Like, a, but they won't cross it or anything like that. Like a true bar tag zigzag. And then later, if you wash it a couple times, it unravels. Okay. So what I'll do is now. Let's say I've gone back a couple times. Now what I can do is I can take this like this. I can do a two half hitch. I know. We'll, 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 if you come to the rendezvous, it's going to be tough to see on uh, uh, camera. Come to the rendezvous. You got to do. You got to come and have hands on. Okay. And I'll show you these knots. Even I'll even teach you a knot class. All right. So that's the end. That's done. So you know I can either. I, I'm not going to burn these, but I can. I can trim them. Boom. And that's the end. I'm done. Let's cut this off. Done. See. Now you might say, oh, yeah, it's too many knots, it doesn't look professional. Well, it's going to be inside out, right? It's inside or out. Or don't put so many knots in. <laughs> okay, it's inside out, plus, okay, see? 
there. Oh. Plus, you might see a little stitching. It's primitive. Right. Okay. Primitive. You guys want to do all this wood carving primitive. and spoon? You don't want to use a metal spoon. You don't want to use a metal pot. You want to carve your pots. You want to carve <laughs> your spoons. Okay. You don't want to use real arrowheads. You want to make fulsome, you know, uh, uh, type fulsome prison blues, uh, you know, arrowheads. So, you know, it wasn't an exacting science back then, all right? It was hand done, yeah. hand eye coordination. They used what they could get their hands on, too. Okay. So, uh, and don't think that the Native American, when they saw cast iron pots, they said, screw this buffalo hump shit. We're going to go with the cast iron pots. And that's um, going to bring me to the end of this. You guys can. You can uh, email me at Bob Two Sticks, uh, Bob Two Sticks at Hotmail .com, or you can message me or talk to me on the Woods Runner uh, about this, or make comments in the in the video. But uh, the Woods Runner is our new Facebook forum for all things bushcraft, primitive, camping, backpacking, whatever, right? And uh, it's actually Bob's brainchild. <laughs> anyway, so I mean, um, you, you you guys use haversacks, you like canvas, and I'm not knocking it. I carried all that shit in Boy Scouts. Okay, I have my. I'm actually kind of recollecting my Boy Scout stuff. I have a canvas yucca pack. Okay, I've looked at all these things. I think they're really really cool. But for me, I've been through it already. I, I've done that. Okay, you guys have a great time. I'm not knocking it. Okay, uh, but sometimes I get sarcastic. Just Bob. Okay. Um, Come on down to this rendezvous. Uh, we call it a national rendezvous because I've tried to invite as many people from as many states as I knew, I, I knew of, okay? If you have anybody who wants to come for a weekend, yeah, they, want, <laughs> they, they want to come for a, a, a week, a We invited days. people from like 50 states. Yeah. And I don't know if there's any more, but we can invite people from those states too. Right? Yeah, I mean, I put it in Kentucky because it's sort of in the middle of where most of the guys camp in bushcraft. like. Tennessee, Ohio is very big. Yeah, you got a lot, a lot of, guys. of guys. A lot of guys in West Virginia, okay? North Carolina. I mean, if you look at it, you got, may have to go through one state. Doug and I have to come through one state. We got to go from Maryland down Virginia 81. We could go across West Virginia, but it's just quicker because this national forest is southeast, and it, and, and it dumps us right off of a route. I think it's 462 or something. We can just go north, and bang, we're right there, okay? Also, from what I understand, there is a, um, there's some lake front there that you could maybe canoe, kayak, you know, I don't know. If you do that, you're on your own, make sure you bring life preservers, you have a plan, let somebody know where you're going, yada, yada, yada. I might even bring my own sea kayak, all right? So, this is short. Uh, it may not tell you everything, but it'll give you a beginning. Uh, no one taught me, I taught myself, okay? So, get some books, you know, talk to your wife, Look at her, the way she, she might be doing, grandma might do, you know, um, crocheting. I learned a lot from my grandma. Or, or whatever, yeah, it might make sweaters, whatever. So uh, you got to learn how to make your own clothing as well as your own gear, okay? Traps, packs, everybody's talking about the, the, the what's it called, the Royson frame or whatever, or, mm. you know, made out of three pieces of stick, you know, whatever. These are all crafts. These are all hands-on sort of things. You need to learn how to lash. Okay, um, you need to know some, you know, edibles out there in the in the woods. You need to know some first aid things out there in the woods. All right, you know how you really know how to do is self rescue. You have to learn how to self rescue. Because a lot of these guys were by themselves. Right. Okay, and they relied only on themselves. I watched the Revenant the other day. He was on. My God, that guy couldn't get a break. I mean, they were knocking the shit out mauled of him. Mauled by a bear. Yeah, but they mauled by a bear, chased by the, the Paiute, Paiute or Shoshone, wherever where the hell they were. Um, I mean, the dude, then, then he, the French, I mean, and, and the dude couldn't get a break. He's had his hands stabbed, his fingers chopped off. I mean, he's, he had that frostbite all over. He was stabbed in lost the back. Lost all his toes. Yeah, he stabbed, Three, there. He stabbed in his times. leg. I mean, this son of a bugger, as soon as he started getting well, somebody would come along and knock the yeah, shit out of him, all right? screwing the hell out I of mean, him. I mean, go to hell. I mean, they, they, they were hard days they, back then, man. Yeah, you ain't shit. If you were hard living in men. the bush back then, it was hard. It was No it was doubt about it. Hard men, and, and they were all for themselves, okay? So anyway, this is the Grizz and the Hawk. Uh, leave some comments. Like I said, if you want any specifics, 
we'll do a follow up. But what you need to do is come to the rendezvous. Yeah, it's that's where all this is going to be done. It's free. It's no different gatherings for 150 to 200 bucks. You're not going to have to pay and, for and anything. And you don't have to pay for any seminars, <laughs> okay? I'm not going to have any personalities there right, other than me and the Hawk, okay? <laughs> yeah, right. And, and some other and some other people yeah. where we can learn together. I'm not knocking anybody, but you know, how do you expect to get things done if, if you got to wait for this or you have to you don't have the money for this or you don't have the gear for this? You know what I mean? So hey, poor man's rendezvous. Come on out, all right? The Grizz. See ya. Out. See ya. Out. See ya. Out. Out. Out.